Hello, beautiful people. Michael Dixon here with another episode of The Art of Everything, the show where we explore the intersection of art, business, and life. And today, we're getting pragmatic. We'll leave the ethereal, hit pause on the esoteric, and unpack a practical pathway you can use to unlock and unleash your personal and professional artistry. But first, Anyone that has ever tried to change anything about themselves may have come across a concept called a keystone habit. The idea being that all habits are not created equal and certain habits can act as a gateway or a gravitational pull towards others. For example, exercising generally leads to eating better. Reviewing and planning your work generally leads to a more effective and productive day. And one sneaky shot of vodka for me generally results in bottle after bottle of cheap sake and midnight karaoke. So what does all this mean for artistry? How can you design and adopt a keystone habit that will pull you towards your own unique self-expression? Now, first things first, there's no universal answer to this, which is a large part of the beauty of rediscovering your personal artistry, is it's personal. You get to choose. You get to design the kind of habits that will push, nudge, and shove you closer to the creative leader you hope to be. But there are three powerful distinctions to a keystone habit that specifically lead to artistry. In my experience, to be truly effective in this context, your keystone habit needs to be simple, original, and dangerous. Simple in that it can't take too much to start. The distance between doing this new habit or sticking with what you usually do has got to be super short in time, in distance, or in cost. For example, if your goal is to run every day, laying your clothes next to the bed before you go to bed is good, sleeping with your sneakers on is better. So it's got to be simple and it's also got to be original. By original, I mean it's got to be authentic. It's got to come from you and be designed for you. It should remind you of who you are and who you hope to become by doing something that comes naturally to you. It should feel almost familiar, but perhaps in a different context. And lastly, it's got to be a little dangerous. It has to put your identity at risk. It must challenge you to know, to own, and to show your whole fine, fabulous self. Most likely, by revealing a little more of who you are to your colleagues, your clients, and your community. So to reiterate what makes a powerful and effective keystone habit to drive artistry is they must be simple, original, and dangerous. I mean, that's a lethal combination for making anything radical. Am I right? Now to give you an example of a keystone habit I use in my life to bring about more artistry, I central align my emails. I've been doing this for about three years now and I love it. It's simple. I hit reply and it's just one more click from left aligned to center. It's original. I've never seen anyone do this, but I've always written poetry and when I have, I've center aligned it. So it's a very natural, authentic expression of who I already am and what I already do. And it's dangerous because not everyone gets it especially when I'm writing to a CEO or a director of a company that I'd like to work with, but may be unfamiliar with me, my style and my approach. To receive a center line email straight up from me can throw them. I could come off as a little too creative, a little too wishy-washy. It forces me to own it, to embody my IP and my intent. So what are the benefits of this particular keystone habit? Why would I bother center aligning my emails and risking possible clients? For me, the center alignment forces me to write as though I'm writing a poem. It immediately calls for alliteration and rhyme. 
I use the unfolding shapes and negative space to inspire and inform the structure of my sentences, which informs the sound of my sentences, which then informs the story itself. Add to that when someone shares their surprise and delight at receiving a central aligned email, I am reminded of my courage to listen for, to engage with and to act upon my authentic self-expression. I grow in my conviction to be creative, not just talk about creativity. And the unexpected benefit is it's now become part of my brand. The world now expects me to be courageous and creative. It demands that I am different and dangerous. I can get away with more, but more importantly, it amplifies my aspirational self. It's like compound interest for my being. And all it takes is one click. So now you have the building blocks. I look forward to hearing how you experiment with your keystone habits and how you design ways to unlock and unleash your personal and professional artistry. Ooh, I wonder what you'll do. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you gain value from this video, subscribe on YouTube, make sure you leave me a bunch of comments, like it, share it with everyone that matters to you. And I look forward to seeing you next week, team. Oh, and before I forget, a quick happy birthday to the most beautiful, stunning, gorgeous mother, partner, lover in the whole universe. Happy birthday, Kate. Thank you. <laughs> Thinking that maybe I'll, I'll do this every day from now on. Who's up for it? Who's keen to join me in this new um, evolution of male makeup <laughs> Kate just told me to stop it because I'm being too creepy <laughs> what do you mean we're not being creepy as we film more stuff in our toilet <laughs> while our son sleeps <laughs> this is to Sunny in the future <laughs> we're your parents